so we are at the safari park and this park is uh, about 30 miles north of the zoo uh, unfortunately it's raining so and the ticket is uh, $112 for two people, so it's about $54, $56, uh, the same as the zoo entrance. Huh? Africa! Walk? Sorry? I think take the lift, right? Take the lift. The car. So you have to leave. Push. Oh, for any cap. Okay. No, no. Okay. You don't need that, honey. Oh yeah, <laughs> all the birds. Because the birds you don't are... need that, but you take... Huh? No, they give me. What are you Oh yes! <laughs> Beautiful! All the birds are everywhere. <laughs> but it's a good walk. Take the train, honey. Walk here. No, no, you had to walk. To get get to the train. Oh, yeah. Yeah, enough battery, yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Dark. What's that again? Blade eye. Buck 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 buck. He have the. Um, what you want? He have the thing. You want food? The thing in the feet. He want food. Oh yeah, he's like a uh, yeah. Oh, they see another one? See this one? Yeah, have time, honey. Well, it is a beautiful afternoon. Welcome to the San Diego Zoo Safari Park and the Africa Tram. We're on the right bus, for sure. Head out. We'll be back in 25 minutes. But, you know, two and a half miles we cover and we do want you to be safe, so avoid the doors, please, on either side of us, because they're only latched. If you sit or lean on them, they are going to pop open. You should have medical emergency occur, though, and you're in the first car, get somebody to tap on the window behind me, and I'll get you the help. Otherwise, if you're in the second or third car is back, the ceiling above you has a yellow strip, press and hold that, and it'll send the medical alert into the cab. Sun's really beautiful on the hills. Yep, Fendidi. What it rain does makes it all good looking. We'll be seeing some other good-looking animals here on our left shortly. The southern white rhino, the fringe-eared orc, and it looks like the Kenya Paula on that hill. Wow. Usually I don't talk about anything on the left in East Africa until we come back in 20 minutes, but if no train is coming my way, I'll do that for you because it is a beautiful, beautiful encounter visually, and seldom do you see all this. Everybody enjoying the grass is growing in after the rain. Yeah. And hearing us real well are those rhinos. They got a cute hearing, great sense of smell. And if you feel like standing up, I don't mind if you stand. Do it though when we fully stop for your safety. Because nobody gets this view. Huh, girls? No? Are you listening? Hmm? Poor eyesight, great animals to talk about. They're our emblem proudly because we've got 98 of them born here in 47 years. We love you. We love everybody. Look at them all. They don't ask for much. Just some grass to eat, mm -hmm. some land to cruise in, and they all help each other survive. So it teaches us a lot of valuable lessons. I'll tell you. Nature does. What's important to these on the right? Raising their offspring. Twenty-five chicks hatched so far this season. We've had good luck. And the babies are gray, but they'll be developing that light pink color like the adults to better blend into the saltwater marshes of Africa. So everything fits into the survival thing. Color, markings, behaviors, it all works. What works is getting great people like yourself together who support the fact that in conservation, if we get everybody involved, this land will definitely enhance our world and the next generation. It's a good one. Working in 70 countries is a privilege. That's what we do. And because of it, we've worked hard at getting these animals back to the wild. We've done that for 44 species so far. 
give or take. Half of the collection is a bird collection. So on the island paradise, you'll definitely see the great white pelicans from the Danube Delta. And as of course our man-made lagoon is just that. Once we get the water from the San Joaquin River Valley and the Sacramento area, we recycle it through our filtration plant here on the grounds to clean it up, return it to the ponds, the sprinklers are on timers, part of it, and of course plants and animals need water, and we don't have a lot of water in Southern California. The hills validate that around us because that's what the vegetation looks like in a desert. We'll talk more about all that later. So with the uh, ponds getting a little added help, rain-wise, it is nice to be able to see the birds thriving that come to visit, and our birds checking them out too. And the pelicans eating. Coots, cormorants, egrets, mallards. And of course, after a rain, everything smells different. There's an abundance of vegetation or otherwise that you may not even see when it's arid, which it is most of the year out here. So we are very, very fortunate to have this bit of rain. More please. And if you're on the right side of the vehicle, we're not going to stop on hills because we're asked not to. You'll see some faces looking at us. They're so cute. Look at you guys. The bachelors for the Nile Letchway are looking down on us. And this whole thing on the right is pretty much filled with bachelors representing their species, except for, hey, there's a fellow. He's not a bachelor. He's looking for a lady. It's a mule deer, and he's a quite handsome one. I've seen him for years grow up. So thank you for being there, sir. You are special. He knows it. He's not that big. Uh -huh. yeah, now, those that behind small. us on the right, you may see. I don't know. Nile Letchway sometimes walk along the fence line. They listen to us. And then they cruise. But if you look in the back, 3 o'clock on our right, you'll see the Grevy Zebra back there. They look more gray than striped. But they're there. And they're only 2,000 left, so they're critically endangered. Mm -hmm. And wherever you sit, you might see something else that your neighbor can't. That's the beauty of this safari, too. And to make it easy for you, I generally only talk about things we can all clearly see. And what's up close, because it makes it a little easier on the rest of us. So let's try our hand at it as we look left at South Africa and wait for something to come up close visually. Who's on the right though? Any birds in here? Yeah. We've got the yellow-billed stork, the spoonbill, the sacred ibis, East African crown crane, and what a gorgeous, gorgeous visual artistically. It includes the visual of our giraffe up ahead of us on the left, looking all good. Wondering if more rain's going to show up don't know guys but you guys know the weather before it happens I'm telling you you do you're smart so let's head past the uh, Maasai giraffe and the Gila commiserating together watching one of our giraffe trim trees at 20 feet yeah five yep he says I'm gonna get this leaf you watch wow that's a reach and they can do a vertical move like that because they have a ball and joint at the uh, socket that lets them do that vertical move. But if you like red river hogs, we got a couple of them here on the right. Maybe three. That is a nice surprise because half the time I don't see them at all. They hide well. Something for everybody. Even ostriches way out in the field on the left and springbok and everybody loving this rain. The activity levels always up when it's inclement weather. And I'm sure these guys on the right are finding the fascination of digging up the soil to find the decomposing vegetation to eat, because they do that too, helping the plants thrive. So the role they play are quite useful in the marshlands and rainforests. So goodbye, ostrich. See ya. And where there aren't cages between each species, that's purposeful because they all hang out together geographically. So in South Africa, you've got the rust-colored sable antelope looking over his shoulder. And where I typically don't talk about anything beyond the middle till I get there, hopefully those ellipse and water buck will be. They're not endangered. 
have a circle on the rear, and they're not endangered because of the oily hide meat not useful for human consumption. So let's park it next to the herd structure here on our left. There has been a baby born overnight to the Cape Buffalo, so maybe you see that baby. The uh, migration from one location they've been in all day to another for the evening and overnight suits their needs because all of them are here 24 hours a day. This is home for the Eland, the big tan ones in the middle, the Cape Buffalo, and the Sable antelope. You can't get a better view of this unless you were to go to the wild, for sure. The sable have an interesting color, and it's pretty good camouflage, too, because in the marshlands, or even the tall grasses in the savannas, a predator with limited color vision can't tell the difference between that color and green, so it's great camouflage. They have a baby. And where they stand or sit facing different directions, that, too, helps them survive, because when they sit down that way, it's called an alert circle. When they stand, it's a sentinel pose. Either way, it's a win-win because they see and hear the predators approach and alert each other to it. The larger antelope, known as Elan, grazes out in the middle. And we're still looking out there for the Cape Buffalo youngsters because there are two. One about a month and a half old, the other born last night. So we'll see if we can find it. And as we slide past this ostrich and her friend, they're getting a little checkup. Oh, the <laughs> when the torrential part of the rains hit, the giraffe were all hiding underneath this shelter, and I never saw them do that before, so that's pretty cool. We built it because it was 117 degrees two years ago in July, so they, we thought they'd nice. They want some shade, but they prefer the trees. So I see this rainy thing. They used it for that, a shelter. But here on the right side, the Somali wild ass haven't been visible all day. Besides the fascination about their name, it's the horizontal stripes on the lower legs that are fascinating because that's how you identify each one. And they look more gray than lavender right now because of the lighting, but longer, thinner hooves than most equid, they can traverse even the rockier elements in here beautifully. Easily gorgeous, only we don't know how many are left because in Somalia, Civil War, they used them as a food source. We're not putting them back in the wild in harm's way, that's for sure. We certainly don't know how many are left. Are you the two moms? Huh? Where's your baby? Yeah, there's your baby near the feeder. I see you, baby girl. Yeah, thank you for showing me your baby. She's looking at me. Her baby's near her, near the feeder. A little tiny, sleeping next to the feeder, the Cape Buffalo on our left. Yeah, it's okay, you're a good mom. I love you for showing me your baby. See, she's on the alert and very, very protective. They're wild. They don't want us to be near them, but they tend to know my voice after a while and go, yeah, I know. My baby. Precious. All right, onward and upward. We're going uphill nonstop, looking for anything on this side we can all see, and then we'll stop at the top. I think you might get a glimpse of the black rhino in this boma or housing unit before she goes into the middle shelter to hide. We only have one, there are 2,500 left, and we'd like to find her a mate. Female black rhino. The woodlands are next, and those we see now below us, having the mask, thick neck, short curved horns, and big ears. All the better to hear you with in a dense wooded area for sure. Our roan antelope. Now remember, I don't stop on hills, but we'll stop at the top and we'll look for more. seeing a month for not seeing them but at this hour and the kind of weather it is they definitely are visible today they're from mount kenya's rainforest and we sent them 18 in 2004 so that's a remarkable success story at least for one of the 44 species we've returned to the wild they're called bongo they're gorgeous up ahead of us on the right the zambezi lechway are awesome too they are from the forest regions and as doves fly in for the evening 
We then look behind us on the right at the beauty of not only the bongo and the Zambezi lunchway, but definitely looking for the smallest way in the back behind us about four o'clock that are ten. The red-fronted gazelles, all three mammal species are visible tonight. Pretty beautiful. Haven't seen them all day either. And of course, as the sun begins to lower on our left, the San Pasqual Valley, you can look at on the left, and hopefully it never changes from the agricultural base it was set out to be. get a beautiful view of the greater kudu seldom do I ever see right here including near the feeder so I'll try not to spook them because they spook easily and I'm surprised they're here greater kudu are delicate in feature and disposition the young male out there will have horns that measure three foot in length and spiral three times in his lifetime they all have the vertical stripes that look more like the reeds they stand behind, creating an illusion that they're not there in the wild. So these delegates definitely never ever are visible. The greater kudu from the woodlands. Hard to beat the beauty of nature, isn't it? It inspires, it soothes, and it definitely, well, speaks our interest, to say the least. More land like this needed. That's why we saved 800 acres around us for the wildlife. And not only do we see the baby Cape Buffalo now, when you look into South Africa following its mama. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See them. Appreciating her dedication and allowing us to see that baby. If she didn't want to move and have us see that baby, she wouldn't. She'd be hiding it. I love it. Brand new baby overnight. Learning the ropes. Born in that torrential rain. Because they're out here 24 hours a day, that's for sure. And of course, for the sake of the rope antelope way down there at the bottom near the gate that partitions this enclosure from the one downhill ahead of us that houses some Barbary sheep. I see one of them in the shelter. Sometimes you get lucky enough to see them standing on the boulders. And boy, they do a good job of crossing rocks without slipping. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. This animal here, not close, did you know that San Diego is second to only Hawaii and having the most endangered plants now? Good thing we saved this 800 acres around us, eh? Above us, manzanita, yucca, even the outcroppings of rock are mostly granite that are home to plants and animals that thrive in the shadows. Whether it's lizards, rattlesnakes, roadrunners, mm. further over the hill, bobcats, coyotes, mule deer, golden eagles. It's all part of the terrain that is San Diego. Even coastal sage, which used to cover the entire place, is now limited to 10% left. So we call this California coastal sage scrub well worth saving home. And I'm sure you're doing that at your place where you reside too. Plant vegetation indigenous to the area, that'll help. Simple things matter in conservation. Better look at the baby from here maybe, for the Cape Buffalo. And mom looking right at me again. No, I see a girl. It's okay. She has her sisters with her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see you. Beautiful. Very protective of each other, not just their babies. They're one of the few large prey animals to take on a lion and win because they mob attack it. Families, everything. And what's interesting is they all eat something different in the wild. So our horticulture department has a lot to do. Planting vegetation so they can eat it. Giraffe love acacia. Others eat something else, you know, and it's all part of what we do out here. Thanks to the brilliance of Dr. Schroeder, our zoo director and veterinarian in the 60s, who had a plan. 
it was to think in the future long before it occurs. Another mule deer here on the right for you that resides in the hills. And the beauty of this moment comes because you can actually see the circle on the rear end of the ellipse and water buck on the left. Before, when you were on the other side, you probably couldn't. That thing's called a follow me mark. Makes sense, because when they're in tall grasses near the waterways where they dwell, it's an easy visual to cue in on. What looks like a termite mound is actually a feeder with herbivore pellets in there. A little soppy wet, probably like marshmallows. <laughs> or oatmeal, I don't know. Probably a whole lot of water in the top of there, and you like it anyway, huh? Softens all that to your palate. Love it. He says, I'll eat it. That's one of our feeders. Most of them look like square things on the ground that blend in, but the giraffe prefer to eat with their head up. Show us how you do it. Yummy, huh? <laughs> Herbivore pellets kind of look like uh, Cheerios, you know? Yummy. <laughs> And it's a precarious pose to have your face in anything, so they keep an eye out. When they put their head down, it takes a lot of blood to pump through the neck, so they don't do that for very long. Leave that head down. And as a preference, eating with your head up works. Flick those lips around. Any water coming out of there? <laughs> Eland, the lips and water buck, and Maasai giraffe. But if you didn't think there were any deer in Africa, look quickly on the right. North Africa, you'll see them. They're called Barbary Red Deer, and they're native to the Atlas Mountains between Tunisia and Algeria. Now you got more ostriches on the left, the lavender coats of the Gemsbok. Everybody digging in for the evening with the fresh grasses that have grown in, for sure. And the larger antelope that are tan at 1,200 pounds. They're currently being domesticated for their meat and milk because they're abundant and they're everywhere. Plains, deserts, and even elevations of 14,000 feet where it snows in South Africa. Those are Eland. Nice to know everybody on board is supportive of our efforts. You're coming out here in this inclement weather is usually the best looking at them do it or the tiny springbok. Spring now though the giraffe are sentinels and if they're on the alert everybody else will be. The, the smaller springbok can be the same kind of alert system because they jump up in the air eight feet. That alert everybody to some yeah. impending danger. And the sun, the clouds, the rain, a perfect day. Mm. And soothing. <laughs> so as the birds are visible that come and visit, and some migrate like Canada geese, they're here. They we're here this morning. I'm sure they'll be back again, waiting for their friends to arrive too. Enjoy the sights. I'll take it East Africa next. Wow, look at those clouds. They're gorgeous. Wow. It's incredible. Sometimes a few are on it, but not at this hour lately. Some of the photo caravans are still out, probably going home soon. Because they've been out in the field today with people that have booked those through ticket booths so they can enjoy the sights. The southern white rhino are out there, and we'll get a close up of a giraffe. So get really, really ready to take a picture because they don't stay long. Three seconds. Oh, yeah. You got the tree, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yummy. You got it. Yeah, I see it. Yum. <laughs> I support whatever they want to eat. Because the horticulturists know what to put out there that they can. And they protect the trees with fencing, hopefully, to deter them from chewing up the, their shade. But they get to it. It's pretty impressive, oh, isn't yeah, it? This one, right? yeah. yeah. And you're still going at it. Perfect. <laughs> Yummy. You got five horns. You see two, but the third one's under the forehead, the other two behind the main two. Seven vertebrae in the neck like ours. Amazing animals. Just amazing. The greatest of tree trimmers and the greatest of lawn mowers out there in the middle. The southern white rhino. And down the road are more of the same, but up the hill for the first time tonight, I see the wildebeest. 
gray ones up there on the right about three o'clock maybe a few defonsa water buck and this guy reaching into the tree stump for a bite to eat that is a grand gazelle doing his best wow dude that's a reach <laughs> Usually it's the giraffe that go in there and eat from the Baby tree stump. Mm -hmm. He says, I want this stuff now. I'm not waiting, I'm hungry. I'm always hungrier in cooler weather. Grant's gazelle are completely critically endangered. They are gorgeous. I'm out of tissue. <laughs> <laughs> no. He's a big guy. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> this is I'm going to bite you. You don't want to get a lion, man. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> There's oh, a dog, look too. This one too. <laughs> hey, don't do it. Have the kid here. <laughs> oh, that that lion you lion. tail looks muscular. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see a lion, 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 Oh, you can see his nose. Well, he's got one eye open. Sleep good. Sleep with one eye cold, open. You know? Yeah. Oh. Okay. It's too cold for the lights. Yeah. <laughs> you can see the lioness's face.